Hey, welcome to our Achievement Hunter series, aimed at collecting all the Stormwind gameplay achievements in ways any master trader would want, using efficient, innovative, and or wacky methods. As we like to come at things in uncommon ways, our first step will be to secure the docks with the warrior gameplay achievements. Let's get into it. Huh, this should be interesting. In today's video, we're covering the following three warrior achievements. Broadside, where we have to destroy our opponent with the Juggernaut's cannons. Why you bully me? Encouraging us to summon 50 minions from our deck as warrior. And a pirate's life for me. Coercing us to attack with pirates as warrior a whopping 500 times for the third stage. For each achievement, there's usually a number of ways to come at them, so we often recommend two or more decks which can employ unusual strategies when negotiating our way through these, especially if it makes things more interesting or efficient. As we've mentioned in Achievement Hunter guides for previous expansions, Aside from special achievements such as the Baron's Mystery Achievement, these gameplay achievements can only be completed on the ranked ladder, in duels, or in the arena. Unfortunately, it sounds as though the quest lines will not be offered in duels buckets, so we'll have to get even more creative for achievements requiring questline mercenary effects to complete if we don't have the quest line. Still, sometimes duels and arena provide alternate methods if you're missing a legendary or epic card for one of those. One quick side note before we hop into the achievements, there are timestamps for each achievement and deck codes for each deck mentioned in the description below if you'd like to skip to one you're looking for. Let's begin with the achievement that's the most straightforward, but will probably take the longest of these to grind out. A pirate's life for me. To plunder this one completely, you'll have to attack with pirates 500 times. Since it has to be as warrior, we can't pull tricks using a new card like Devouring Swarm to make our pirates attack faster and reload in our hand. That could have made things go quite a bit faster. Still, you can grind through this relatively quickly with a deck running quite a few pirates. We pretty much always introduce a standard deck for each of these achievements, but when there's a more efficient or interesting way to knock it out in Wild, we usually try to include a deck from Wild as well. For this one, we're going to start with our suggestion for Wild, as it will likely be much faster and stronger than the options in Standard. To knock this achievement and the next one out, we used this Panda Pirate Raid deck. It uses a deck introduced as one of the strongest early decks in Wild by Solemn, but swaps Risky Skippers for Youthful Brewmasters so that we can bounce Rakara for additional Juggernauts and overwhelm opponents in longer matchups. We had a phenomenal win rate with this deck, and there's a highlight video that goes into a lot more detail about the deck and our gameplay decisions linked above and in the description if you'd like to check it out. Since it will usually pull patches from your deck, this one deck can be used to knock out all three warrior gameplay achievements. Okay, with this one deck, our guide for warrior is done. <laughs> I mean, yeah, this one deck can do it all, but let's look into some other options as well. If you're missing Raid the Docks, the win rate is likely to drop, but you could play Horde Pillager to re-equip Ankar, or use Outrider's Axe to help cycle through the deck a little faster if you're missing Ankar. In Standard, we tried out a number of the stronger Raid the Docks lists from HS Replay early on, and there are some more refined ones that have over a 50% win rate now. But many of them are running between 10 and 16 pirates, and the progress towards the attacks with pirates is slow. This Pirates, Poisons, and Pandas deck is based on a 59% win rate deck from HS Replay, which runs 18 Pirates, but cuts and Athletic Studies and the Coerce, which were underperforming, for two youthful brewmasters so that we can do the Rokara bounces we mentioned a moment ago. Though bouncing a Fog Sail Freebooter or a Stone Maul Anchorman can solve some puzzles too. Again, if you don't have Raid the Docks, but you want to knock this out in Standard, tossing the Athletic Studies and Coerce back into this list and adding an Outrider's Axe will still net you a decent number of wins while grinding through this achievement. 
Good luck living a pirate's life. Next up, let's tackle the other achievement, Terrorizing the Seas, Broadside. For this one, you have to finish off your opponent with the Juggernaut's Cannons. You know how I added Youthful Brewmaster into both decks we covered in the last section so that we could bounce Rokara and summon an additional Juggernaut or two? Besides being really fun to have two or three Juggernauts at once, having more Juggernauts firing each turn improves the chances of the shots going face and opening the door to complete this one. If you have Raid the Docks, the decks we just covered are the ones we suggest. However, not everyone has this questline, and as mentioned in the intro, it's not possible to get the questlines from duels buckets. Hearth Arena's tier list does show it as an option within Arena, so it may be possible to draft it, but drafting it and a deck with sufficient pirates to trigger it and still win games, since the finishing blow has to be with the Juggernaut's cannons, is likely to be a major challenge. So if you don't have Raid the Docks, do you just have to give up on this one? No, it will be quite the challenge and require a lot of patience, luck, and skill, but it's still possible if you don't have the warrior questline. The next couple decks we're going to recommend are the base forms of the decks we're going to recommend for achievements in each of the classes which require a questline reward to complete. Warrior, Warlock, Rogue, Priest, and Demon Hunter. The versions here are more oriented towards winning with the Juggernaut, and each of these class achievements have special requirements which we can tailor these decks to, but you'll see what we're going for when we're finished with these. So why is there rogue gameplay going on in the background while I'm talking about pulling off a kill with the Juggernaut? Because the goal of this deck, whose questline? is to get a copy of our opponent's mercenary they play out as a reward from their quest line. We have a few options for getting copies of their mercenaries. First, if we think they're about to play their quest line reward, we can play Plagiarize to get a copy. Second, if the mercenary was the last card played on their turn, Vanessa Van Cleef can get us our own copy. Or third, we can copy their mercenary with Faceless Manipulator and bounce it with Shadow Step or Ten Wu. As far as getting value from the mercenary goes, you'll be behind your opponent, so it'll be a challenge to pull ahead. In the case of the Juggernaut, you will be stacking value almost as quickly as the opponent, and an extra Shadow Step or Ten Wu can allow you to summon an additional Juggernaut to swing harder. However, this will still be quite the uphill battle because you have to deal with all the pirates they've been summoning throughout the game, pull off this copy maneuver, and win the game with the cannons. The stall from Armor Vendor, burst damage and value with Alexstrasza, Jandis, and Kazakis can all help set them to a low life total with a chance to take them down with the cannons. However, they'll be summoning a pirate and can gain extra armor each turn. So if you can't summon a second or third juggernaut yourself, it'll be really tough to complete this one. I'd only recommend going this path if you're extremely dedicated and have saint-like patience. In Wild, we've got a deck with a similar concept, the Mercenary Mill Rogue. It uses a mill rogue shell with heavy cycle to get through your deck quickly so that you have a togwaggle scheme or faceless manipulator and shadow step in hand by the time your opponent plays their mercenary. Since the deck cycles so fast, there's a decent chance you can draw a shuffled copy of the mercenary and play it out before the game ends. Finishing off the opponent with cannons will likely still be quite the challenge, but with Tawaggle Scheme and Shadows from Valera, you could play two copies of Rokara on the same turn, assuming the game has gone till 10 mana, helping you swing and put the pressure back on them with hopes of finishing them off with the cannons. Doing the questline achievements without actually having the questlines will be absurdly challenging but not impossible. Best of luck shocking your opponent to death with a broadside. Now for the last achievement we're covering in today's guide. Why you bully me? 
For this one, we just need to summon 50 minions from our deck as a warrior. If summoning patches from your deck when grinding through the pirate's life achievement didn't complete this one, you've got several very nice options for knocking this one out. In standard, Cowardly Grunt and Commencement are your best bet for pulling this off, meaning you likely want to play Big Warrior. A deck that was quite fun to play and still won over 50% of games was this Grunt Holds the Keys Warrior. It's running Heavy Plate for flexible draw or armor gain, and the meme direction of the deck is that we run Keymaster Alabaster. Most opponents were able to clear him with us only getting one card from him, but he really grabbed their attention and sometimes got them to commit a whole lot of resources into removing him. If you want to drop Keymaster to boost the win rate even higher, swapping in Lothar would put this deck much more in line with the big warrior builds on HS Replay. Now in Wild, I used the first deck we introduced to climb a fair bit this month. And unfortunately, I didn't face many decks that felt like we would really be able to be greedy and go long against. However, there are some. And against those, you might be able to summon quite a few extra minions onto the board with this next deck. You dare bully this? Is probably about as greedy as you can get and have any hope of winning games. It has your standard early game control tools, but for summoning minions onto the board, in addition to Cowardly Grunts and Commencement, you've got Gather Your Party, Woe Cleaver, and OG Yasharge. If you draw your minions from your deck before you get to summon them with your cheats, Dead Man's Hand can give you another go at it, or let you go infinite. Forge of Souls will pull Bulwark and Woe Cleaver simultaneously to help keep you alive long enough so that you can equip the cleaver and pull out a minion or two. Is it too greedy? Probably. But is it a really fun way to knock this out? Definitely. Have fun making sure no one dares to bully you. And that's a wrap. If you found this helpful, drop a like. By provoking the algorithm to react, you'll help others raid these achievements. If you really want to shiver their timbers, go ahead and leave a comment too. We'll be doing guides for the rest of the United and Stormwind gameplay achievements, so be sure to check back, or subscribe, because we're stockpiling a treasure trove of content. Also, if you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comments. And if you enjoy participating in experiments live, check out our stream at twitch.tv forward slash ssalchemist. We currently stream on Saturdays and Sundays. And remember, you're awesome. Thank you for watching and have an awesome day.